on the court. The diamond. The track. The gridiron. Follow the adventures of Frank Farrell, the athlete. Sportsmanship, clean living, character, health. On the athletic field today, youth learns leadership for tomorrow. Come with us to enjoy the adventures of Frank Farrell. Young America carries on in the world of sports. Nothing in the world is more thrilling and exciting than a good game of American football. Every youth who plays the game loves it, and Frank Farrell is no exception. As our episode opens, Frank is a student at Trent High School. Trent boasts of the supremacy in all sports, and Frank Farrell has been a mainstay of all Trent teams. We find him now in the last quarter of the game between the Trent High Bearcats and the Lawrence Wolverines. There is just one minute left to play, and the Wolverines are leading the Bearcats by one point. As we tune in on the game, a radio announcer is broadcasting a play-by-play description. Let's listen. My, my, what a battle these fine teams are putting on today. The Trent Hyde Bearcats haven't been playing their usual game today, however. They're trailing by one point. Lawrence Wolverines, 14. Trent Bearcats, 13. This boy, Frank Farrell, has been playing a wonderful game, however. At quarterback, he's a remarkable general, and he's a wonderful passer and kicker. He threw the first pass at Joe McFarlane that resulted in the Bearcat first touchdown. He allowed Joe McFarlane to kick goal, but Joe failed him. No goal. Farrell himself kicked goal after the second touchdown, but Joe's failure leaves the Bearcats one point behind. With one minute left to play. They have 25 yards to go. Doesn't look so good for the Bearcats. Well, I see they're lining up. 25 yards is a long way to go in just one minute. Looks like they're getting ready for a forward pass there. There goes the ball. No, 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 it's not a pass. Farrell is attempting a place kick from that 25-yard line. There it goes. Will he make it good? Boy, oh boy, did he make it good. Right between the old goal posts. That was as pretty a place kick as I've ever seen. That boy Farrell has sure got what it takes. Boy, oh boy, am I glad that one is over. What a finish. Hang up another stuff for the Bearcat. Hey, hey, Fred, shut that door. Tell it, boy, I wish I could lock it so the coach couldn't get in. He's going to be plenty sore. We didn't win this game. Frank Farrell won it. Frank Farrell? Frank Farrell? You think the rest of us have been asleep or something? Who made the first touchdown? I made that run. Yeah, on a forward pass. But who threw the ball right in your mitt? It was Farrell. Yeah, it sure was. You got no license to crap, Joe. Fine spot you put the team in when you muffed kicking goals. Something funny about that, believe me. Yeah, maybe you think so, but it didn't seem funny to us. Boy, oh, boy. Frank saved our skin when he made that place kick in less than a minute to go, too. He got plenty of credit for it, didn't he? Now that we have a girl cheerleader, I guess Farrell will grandstand more than ever. What your sister can see in that conceited, swell-headed Farrell is more than I can understand. Frank Farrell's head is plenty normal, Joe. If anyone's head needs checking, it's yours. Not swelled, just naturally thick. Is that so? Right. You're so because Frank won the game for us, aren't you? What did you want him to do, give the ball to you to carry over? There were 25 yards to go, Flatfoot, and you haven't got what it takes. Oh, no? Old Jim the Speedball is talking again. Speed. If it hadn't been for me opening the way for you, you never would have made a yard. You're so slow this year, you can't even get through the holes I do make for you. Don't be funny. Any scrub on the second team could cut a hole big enough for me to get through. Oh, yeah? That's about the only time you show any class is when you're playing the scrub. We'll have to take on some little ward schools again so you can start gaining a little ground. Why, you big clumsy ox. Even playing ward schools, you'll get lost finding your man. Listen, Mr. Wise Guy, you're so smart. Answer this one. When you're given a signal for a certain play, why do you grab the ball, ignore signals, and carry it somewhere else? Well, what are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Wait a minute. Now, get this straight, Joe. If you ever say anything like that again, hey, now, I'm wait gonna... a cut out, cut it out, you two saps. You know the coach has warned you against fussing. Oh, oh, hello, Frank. Nice going, boy. Nice going. Thanks, Fred. I sure was lucky. Just got a good break. That's all. Boy, oh boy, was our game rough today. No teamwork at all. We better not play that kind of a game when we meet the Ramblers. I can tell you that. Why not? The rest of us won't have to do anything. We can just sit on the bench. <laughs> 
Tell them we'll leave the chairs and you can save the day. That should be duck soup for the great Frank Farrell. Ah, grow up, Joe. That's kid stuff. Kid stuff? Well, that's a darn sight better than your grandstand stuff. What's your trouble, Joe? What are you all burned up about? Oh, you wouldn't know, would you? You were so afraid that someone else would get into the limelight by carrying the ball over for the last touchdown that you took a long chance and wound up the game with a place kick. That's really funny, Joe. What else could I do? If we had lost the ball on downs at that stage of the game, the Wolverines would have carried home the honors for the first time in three years. Don't pay any attention to him, Frank. Just let him raise. If he could kick goal, we wouldn't have been in that tough spot. You keep out of this, Jim. Your game is nothing to write home about, I can tell you that. All right, cut it. What's the idea of all this argument anyway? No argument at all. I'm just telling him a few facts. If I had gummed up as many signals as he did today... Cut it, Joe. I warned you about that. Quiet, both of you. The coat. Bearcat. Bearcat, you play more like a bunch of sick kittens. What would you have done if Frank hadn't been in the game today? Of all the terrible teamwork I ever saw. What's the matter with you fellas? Don't you know what signals are for? Of all the rough stuff I ever saw, today's game takes the prize. And while we're on the subject, I'm talking to you now, Joe. Wolverine's right end, the one with the sore leg. You kept working on that leg. I don't like to see that. Play clean or don't play. We're in the win, aren't we? Sure we are, but not that way. If you stay on this team, you better realize right now that sportsmanship comes before anything else. Remember that. And Jim, what was the matter with you? You might as well have been home asleep. Your mind wasn't even on the game. I uh, guess you're right, Coach. It was an off day for me. Well, you better get with it. That's all I've got to say. Now listen, boys. You won this game, but it doesn't mean a thing, see? You played like a bunch of sandlot youngsters. You fellas have got a reputation. Something to work hey, for. Hey, you guys, you play like a bunch of... Oh, oh boy, hello, Coach. Oh, I didn't know you were here. Well, if you're balling them out, go ahead, be, because that is what I was going to do. Oh, you were. Well, Spud, if you knew anything about the game, I'd let you substitute for me. But what you know about football will never tax your brain. Oh, well, yeah? Well, you don't use your brain very much either. Or you'd have me play on the first team. You wouldn't keep me on the old scrubs all the time. Gosh, I'm a good player, Coach, if you just knew it. You don't tell me. And where did you ever play on a first team? Why, back in my hometown. Back in, in, uh, in... Oh, it. I can never say that word. What word? It's connected oh. Oh. <laughs> What word? You heard me, darn you. Well, maybe I did, Spud. Anyway, I don't want to hear any more. All right, boys, get your clothes on. And believe me, be in shape for a real workout tomorrow. That's all. Hey, Jim, your sister said she'd wait and walk home with you. Oh, Jim, I'll be glad to go with you. You remember me, don't you, Jim? I always <laughs> did like cheerleaders. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys, save your breath. She wanted me to take her home, but she hasn't got a car. Boy, I don't walk home for nobody. Say, hey, Spud, tell her Jim went out the back way, but for the wait, and I'll take her home. Yeah, you take her home. Say, don't be crazy, guys. But much obliged for the idea. See you later, fellas. Oh, Spud, did you deliver my message? Hi, Helen. Yeah, but Jim had the date. He, he, he went out the back way. He did? Why, that old meanie. Oh, well, I'll, I'll wait and walk home with some of the other boys. Yeah, but no use. They, they all have dates, Helen. <laughs> they all beat it out the back way. I guess you better come on and walk home with me, huh? Oh, did Frank Farrell have a date, too? Oh, I might have known you'd ask about him. Sure, he had a date. He, he's gone, too. Oh, that's strange. I didn't think he ever went out with girls. Oh, boy, that guy's got a million of them. Come on, Helen, let's go. But aren't you going to take off your football suit? Oh, heck no. People don't know I'm on the team if I don't wear my suit. Gosh, I never get to play. Come on. Well, I guess we may as well. Oh, here comes Noel in his car. Noel, or that old sissy cat, just because his father owns a bank, he thinks he's somebody. Oh, Helen, there you are. I've been waiting for you for the last half hour. Come on, I'll take you on in. Oh, all right, Noel. I didn't know you were waiting. Why, Spud, there are some of the boys. I thought you said they all went out the back way. Oh, well, I guess they came back again, doggone it. Mm -hmm, I see. Well, come on, Helen, let's get going. Oh, no, no, I'm going to wait for my brother. I'll go home with him. Well, you can both ride with me. Oh, no, no, you go ahead. You see, he may be walking with friends, and we wouldn't want to crowd you. Oh, I see. Why don't you come right out with it and say you're waiting to walk home with Frank Farrell? Why, no. I don't see how you can say that. Well, I hardly know Frank. No, it's plain to be seen, though, what you think of him. Every other cheer you lead is for him. He only gets a cheer when he deserves it. And that's nearly all the time, but let's not pull out about it. Come on, get in. Hey, sister, just a minute. Where's that brother of yours? What business is that of yours? You will oblige me very much, Tony, if you'll stay away from my brother. Oh, yeah? 
Gee, Ellen, you're getting prettier every year. I wish I was still going to school. You look good to me, baby. I'm not interested in the slightest. You, you've been drinking. Sure, the home team won. Got to celebrate. Where's your brother? He'd better step on it if he knows what's good for him. Now, see here, Tony. Just because you ran around with that rowdy bunch and beaten up some of our high school boys at the dances, don't think you have a right to bully everyone you see. Somebody with a little nerve may give you what you deserve someday. Oh, you think so, baby? Well, there's no one in this town can do it. Hello, sis. I've been waiting long. Oh, hello, Tony. I want to see you for a few minutes, Jim. Jim, don't you go with him. Oh, well, will it wait till later, Tony? You know that when I have business, it never waits. I said I wanted to see you, and that means right now. Get into the car, Jim. Don't have anything to do with him. Well, uh, I'll see you tomorrow, Tony. Just a minute, Jim. You know what I want to see you about. That's all right. Just move over, and we three boys will all go to town. Look out, Ellen. You keep your hands off me. Leave her alone, Tony. Shut up. Don't get me so at you, Jim, or I'll smack you down like I would anyone else. Oh, no, you won't, Tony. I'd like to see anyone try to stop me. Hey, hold it a minute, Tony. What's going on here? What's the trouble? Oh, Frank, I, I'm so glad you're here. No trouble at all, little boy. You walk home with Helen. I'm going to town with these two fellows. Maybe Helen doesn't care to walk. Looks to me like she wants to get into the car. I, I do, Frank. Wait a minute. So the little tin hero, Frank Farrell, comes to the rescue, huh? Don't think because you put things over on the gridiron that you can put anything over on me. Just a minute, Tony. You're not bluffing anyone. Get that straight. Yes, and you get this straight. It don't pay for kids to mix in my affairs, see? Some have tried it. But these two fists have tamed them down, and I don't let up on them till they beg for mercy. And right here in front of this dame and these high school saps, I'm going to do the same thing to their little hero, Frank Farrell. I'll take a chance on that. All right, you ask for it, and you're going to get it. Why, why, you... Oh, oh, my arm. Oh, oh. Oh, what did you do to him? Oh, hey, what happened to him? Oh, what did you do, Frank? Well, he asked for it and he got it. Boy, I, I didn't hear him ask for it, but I was sure glad to see him get it. Well, Frank Farrell has finally called Tony's bluff. And it's a bit peculiar when you remember that Tony is bigger and heavier than Frank Farrell. Just how did Frank put him out of action so quickly? And has Frank acted wisely? He has made an enemy out of Tony, one of the toughest of the young rowdies of the town. Frank's life is full of thrills. Don't miss the next episode.